Hello and welcome. I'm your Geek Eric. And today, today we're going to walk through how to set up a GitHub repo to go along with your new Godot project. Let's get right to it. So first up, you need a GitHub account, you need Godot installed, and you need a Git client on your computer. So we'll walk through each of those as we get to it. But first, I'll let you go set up your GitHub account if you don't have one already. You could pause the video and come right back. After you get it set up, you need to go to your profile page. And then in the top right, you'll see this plus sign right here. And we're going to make a new repository. Okay. So I'm going to call this test repo and I'm going to leave it public, but I'm going to delete it after making this video. So you can choose now whether you want to have this publicly accessible or private. Some reasons to choose one or the other is public is better for showing golf to recruiters or a company for an interview while private is better if you are wanting to make a piece of closed source software like maybe a closed source game that you're wanting to charge money for okay so I'm not going to initialize a readme but that's something that you might want to do if this is going to be a open source project and you're expecting other people to follow a set of instructions on how to get the project set up. But we're not going to do that for this video. Now here's, here's a really important step that will save you a lot of trouble. You want to come down to the git ignore file and we're going, we're going to want to add the go dot git ignore and basically what this is going to do is there's some project files or binary files that are generated whenever the program opens up your project for the first time. And you don't need to share that to everyone's computer that's working on the project. For example, you may have some binaries that are only compatible with your operating system. For mine, it would be Linux. I could be working with someone on a Windows computer, and they would have binaries completely different from me. So we don't want to be pushing those back and forth. So this get ignore file will just ignore certain files or folders that we specify. Now, GitHub is very nice and has a bunch of default get ignore files. So there's there's some for Godot, Unity, and other other such things. <laughs> Now, um, you could choose a license. I'm not going to choose one. Again, this project's not going to stay up very long, so I'm not worried about that. And we're going to create the repository. Now that the repository's been created, let's click on this clone button and let's copy the URL right here. Now, I'm going to open up my Git client for this video which is going to be the GitHub Git client. In the future, I want to make a video showing you how to use the terminal as your Git client, but that will be a more advanced video. And if you have any ideas for things that you would like covered in a more advanced Git video, please, after watching this one, drop them in the comment section down below. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like. Let's get back to it. So I'm going to minimize the web browser now. We will need this later. Okay. So I have my GitHub desktop client. You can get this by going to the GitHub website and downloading it. It's pretty simple. And when you open it up for the first time, you'll be prompted to log into your GitHub account. So one of the nice things about this is that it will have all the projects that you have access to in this 
your repository section. So I'm going to click on the repository that I just made and I'm going to clone it. So we actually didn't have the copy of that URL earlier. I'm just used to that because I'm used to cloning it on the command line. But hey, this is easier. <laughs> now we want to make sure we put this in a place that's easy to find. So what I like to do is I like to have a git folder in my home directory. Or in Windows, sometimes I put it inside the documents folder. So I'm just going to choose the git folder here and then look at this again. So home, my username, the git folder, and then the name of the repository will be the folder inside the git folder. Clone. This shouldn't take too long. It's a, it's basically an empty repository. So, well, maybe my internet's being bad. I don't know. Okay. So we have one commit. That one commit is the git ignore file. So what we're going to want to do first to get this set up is we want to open up the git ignore file. So I'm going to bring in my file folder. I will navigate to where I cloned the repository. And well, now you're, you might be looking at this and wonder, well, where is the get ignore file? Now, if you see that dot in front of the file name shows that the file is a hidden file. Now I'm going to hit control H that works for my operating system. I believe that also works on Windows. Mac is a little different, but you can Google how to show hidden files on Mac if you're using that. So now we're able to see the hidden files. So let's open up the Get Ignore. And I'm going to add I'm going to add a folder called the builds folder. Now, I like doing this because this way I can keep my builds inside my repo, but I won't be pushing them to the server because if I ever want to generate a pass build, I could just rebuild. So I don't need to clutter and bloat my git repo with build files. So what this is going to do is it's just going to ignore the build folder and everything inside of it when committing new files, just to make it easy. So don't forget to save and close out of the text editor. Now let's make our first commit. So it's always good to have the commit name be somewhat relevant <laughs> to what you actually did. And if you're having a hard time coming up with a short title for what you did, then you probably did too much and you should have committed a couple of times instead of one big commit. The reason why that's important is because the more, the more commits that you have, the more places that you have to roll back to in the event that a bug or a corrupted file shows up, you have more chances to recover your data by rolling back to one of your previous commits. So I'm going to title this simply add builds folder to get ignore. Super simple. So we're going to make sure that we have this file change checked and we're going to commit to master. Master is the name of the default branch in GitHub. So now you may think that someone else on your repo could see your commit, but you would you would be wrong. So you committed your change to your local repository, not 
GitHub server. So to push your change to the server, you first have to commit it locally. Then we can see that we have one commit that we can push to origin or the server. So we're going to push this to origin. We push to the server. Now, if you want to check, it's super easy. All you have to do is go back to your repo on GitHub and reload the page. And now you can see that we have two commits instead of one. You can see that we added the builds folder to the git ignore file. So at this point, you may be wondering when we're actually going to get to the Godot part of this tutorial. So this is actually the easiest part. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Godot program. Now that you have your Godot program opened, let's go ahead and make a new project. And we're going to call this test project. And we're going to want to save this inside our repository folder. And we're going we're, and we're going to make a folder inside of it for the project. Now you don't have to do this. You can make the project folder the repository folder. But I just like doing it this way because we could have that build folder in the root of the repository. We can have a art binary folder, and you could in that folder you could put stuff like your GIMP files and the CRITA files and your .blend files because you don't want those files in Godot because it doesn't know what to do with most of them, but you might still want to track them using source control. So you could put that in your root folder and share it around with your other teammates. So let's click create and edit. That's a beautiful, beautiful program. Look how fast that opened. But for this tutorial, we really don't have anything to do in here. So we're going to, well, we might come back to this. So I'm just gonna move this to my other monitor. You can minimize it if you would like. Now you can see we have several changes, but I don't like working that much in the master branch. I like that being merged into when there's a really stable part of the game. So you'll do some work, you'll iron out some bugs, and then you can merge that stable part into the master. So if we shouldn't all just work in the master branch, then what should we do? Okay, well let's click on current branch right here, and let's make a new branch. Let's call it develop. And we're going to name new branch. So we want to take the changes that we have that are not staged. These are unstaged changes. And we want to bring them to develop with us. So we're going to click this. So now what we really did is we just took and we initialized the Godot project. So I'm just going to name the commit message Short, sweet, simple, it works. Now let's commit this to develop. Now that it's been committed, let's push this branch to, to the server. So right now, develop does not exist on GitHub. Let's fix that. Okay, so now let's think about what happens whenever we want to bring a outside person to work on our game with us. So what if you're on a team? Well, now that you have the repository set up, you need to give your teammates access to it. So let's go to the settings page. Now, certain tabs in the settings page will require you to enter your password just to verify it's you. Because here, you could do bad things like delete the whole repository. So be careful. 
So now we made it to the Manage Access tab. We're going to invite a collaborator. This will send an email to the collaborator and they will have to click yes on it saying that they would like to join your repository within 24 hours, I believe. There's a time limit on it. Okay, but like I said earlier, we really don't want people working in the master branch. Okay, so let's go to the branch tab next. A new person to your project, when they clone your repo, will be on the default branch when they open up the repo. So we want to change that to the develop branch. So now we've got our new contributor, we have our branch set up, Let's go back and try a couple things. So now we're coming to the end of the video. I would like to leave you with some helpful tips of how you should work in your repository with a team of two, four, and greater. I have my notes. <laughs> okay. So, two people should not work in the same binary file at the same time. Now, what does that mean? Okay, let's say you have a PNG or a scene file or basically anything that's not a human readable text document, mostly your code. So how do you get around this? Well, let's say I need to work in the main scene and I'm building the level in there. But Melissa needs to work in the UI canvas. An easy workaround is to make the UI canvas its own scene. Make it its own prefab in uh, Unity terms. And that way, Melissa can work in that prefab and I can have the HUD prefab in my main scene and I could work in the main scene and we won't have any conflicts. Now, let's say that's not an option. Let's say that you have two people that are both working on tweaking the level. What you can do, you could have one person, they do their work in it, and then they commit their work, they push it to the develop branch, and then the other person would come over here and they would fetch and so after hearing that there's an update on that branch the other teammate could fetch the repository to update what your computer knows about the remote repository and then click on here and click pull and that will pull the work that your friend pushed and then you can go in and work in that level, commit your work, push it back. And y'all could do that back and forth. If you're working in a team of two people and it's a game jam, yeah, you can get away with working in the same branch. You can get away with both working and develop. But if you're working in a bigger group of people and for any longer running amount of time than just the weekend, then I would highly suggest that you work in different branches that are branching off of develop. So what should you name your branch? Well, if it's a small team and a short project, keep it simple. Just name it your first name or your username. If you're on a bigger project, if you're doing this in a larger team with task tracking software that has tickets, I would recommend naming the branch the ticket that you're working on. And then when you're done with that branch and done with the ticket, you need to merge it back into develop and delete the branch. Not develop, but the, the, the ticket branch. Well, let's show you how that works. So as you can guess, if I'm your geek, Eric, my name's Eric. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a new branch. This is, this is a great spot here. 
I want to make sure that my branch is branching off of develop. So it's based on develop. So let's create it. I'm going to push my branch to the server. Now, what I want to do is I want to come in to the go dot project and let's make a change for demonstration purposes. We're not going to make a big change. We're just going to make a new scene. Let's call it world. I'm going to save it to the root of the project. And wait a couple seconds and it should show up over here. Now I'm going to commit this to my personal branch. So now that I've committed it to my branch, I'm going to push to origin. So if you're working on a bigger team and this is not a game jam setting, I would really recommend to when you're wanting to merge your branch back into develop that you make a pull request and you add someone to that pull request that is familiar with what you're working on so they can double check what you did because that second that second I look can never hurt and often saves a lot of time when you click the create pull request button it opens up your web browser and you're wanting to send your pull request from your personal branch to develop. You can name it whatever you like. By default, it's the name of that commit message. And over here, you can add people who are in your project. So if you, let's say, are working with two programmers and you do a code change, you might send that, you might add the other programmer as your reviewer. If you've made lots of level changes and you have a designer on your team, you should include your designer. If it's a mixture of both, add both. Doesn't matter. In this case, I'm not going to add anyone because I don't have anyone in the project except for me. So I'm just going to merge it myself. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Now, this was definitely focused toward beginners and I will be making a follow-up video, a video targeted for more advanced Git topics. There we'll be using the command line, going through problems like merge conflicts and merge conflicts, etc. <laughs> and uh, well, if that sounds like something that interests you, then please subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you liked it, if it was helpful. If you stuck around this long, you might as well. Ring that notification bell. I also participate in mini game jams. You can check out some of my other ones. And a series called Game Dev News to help you stay up to date with all things game dev related. Thanks for watching. See you next time.